How are you doing? Can you hear me now? Hello. Hey. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking someone. What about you? How was your day? <sighs> that was a crazy Tuesday and all week is gonna be crazy. Why? I have to because I have two events uh this week at uh, the main event is uh, Saturday. We have a golf tournament in Corinto and I'm or I'm the wedding planner of my company. Then uh, try to get all things in the time, in the place and try to done explode the budget. Excuse me? Uh-huh, that kind of um, work. So they are tired, that kind of job is tired, but it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing, yes. It's never boring. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. Boring, but nothing. It's tired, but it's exciting at the same time. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Aymara? How are you doing? How was your day? Uh, fine. Mm -hmm. I I work in sales. As, as for that, is is not a good good day today because only one sale today. <laughs> so sales are really low. Yes. My best friend works in sales, and yes, it's stressful, and she's been having bad days too. Sales are decreased, and bajado la venta. So yeah, sales are decreased. So yeah, so I understand, but um, not all days are the same. I hope that they get better, <laughs> and you sell more. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Alexis, Mario, Francisco, Carlos Humberto, Matiel, Carlos Alberto, and Marilyn and Samuel for being on time. Uh, so we're going to start today the class from where we stopped yesterday. It's just like, ready? Okay, here is the presentation that we were standing on yesterday. And let me see, we stopped here in this part. We were uh, practicing this conversation, right? Or we just read it? I don't remember if we um, we didn't practice it, right? Or we, no, we didn't practice that. So um, just to refresh, is there a, any volunteer? I will need two volunteers to role play this conversation. I have Samuel and who wants to practice with Samuel? Alexis, thank you so much. You can start someone. Okay. Dad, I've decided to launch a new Papa sandwich. It's going to make our brand more popular and capture more sales. Alejandro, we sell so many products already. Papa's burger, Papa's fries, Papa's salad, Papa's chicken, etc. Come on, yo man. How would you lose your mind? But Dad, I quite love every single product we come up uh, with. We have always sold everything uh, we offer. Besides, I think it's about time for a product line extension and time to open a new branch. If you say so, but I don't want to hear you complain about having so much work. <laughs> and I'm not working over time. If you think it is going to work, you're probably right. Excellent. You did an amazing job with this. Um, but yes, it's kind of funny. Someone should be the dad. <laughs> well, you did it excellent. Now you can change roles. <laughs> okay. Alexis, you start now. Okay. Dad, I have decided to launch the new Papa sandwich. It's going to make our brain more popular and capture more salt. 
Alejandro. We will we sell so many products already. Papa's burger, papa's fry, papa's salad, papa's chicken, etc. Come on, young man. Have you lost your mind? But that our clients love every single product. We come, we can upgrade. We have always sold everything we offer. Besides, uh, I think it's about time for a product, pro line extension and time to open a new branch. Branch. If you say so, but I don't want to hear your complaint about having so much work and I'm not going, and I'm not working overtime. If you think it's going to work, you are probably right. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sound, sound like a father. <laughs> yeah, you sounded like a father. And yes, intonation is really, really important that you did it excellent. It's so. Just a couple of words, it's capture, capture, capture more cells. And then this is whip. I think that that is um the only thing that I heard. But you did it excellent. Do we have two more volunteers? Magdiel, thank you so much. Who wants to practice with Magdiel? I have Aymara. Let's practice with Aymara and then Melanie and Mari. Okay. Okay. I'm going to serve. Okay. Dad. <laughs> okay. Dad, I've decided to launch the new Papa Sandwich. It's going to make our brand more popular and capture more sales. Alejandro, we sell so many products already. Papa's burger, papa's fries, papa's salad, papa's chicken, etc. Come on, young man, have you lost your mind? But that our clients love every single product we've come up with. We have always sold everything we offer. Besides, I think it's about time for a fraud client extension and time to open a new branch. If if you say so, but I don't but I don't want to hear you complain about having so much work and I'm not working over time. If you think it's going work, you're probably right. Okay. Really good. So let's See, um, now you can change. Now you start, Aymara. Okay. Dad, I be decided to launch to launch the new Papa Sandwich. It's going to make our brand more popular and capture more sales. Alejandro, we sell so many products already. Papa's burger, Papa's fries, Papa's salad, Papa's chicken, etc. Come on, John man, have you lost your mind? But Dad, our clients love every single product we'll be come up with. We have always sold everything we offer. Besides, I think it's about time for products, products line extension and time to open a new branch. If you say so, but I don't want to hear you complain about having so much work. And I'm not working overtime. If you think it's going going work, you're probably right. Excellent. Yes, that is very, very, very nice of you guys to practice in with that. There's a couple of things. For example, this I decide either. I decided. La E no se pronuncia. I decided. I decided. And then the word popular. Popular. And very well, very well done. Now let's listen to Melanie and Mario. Okay. 
that that I, I decide to launch the new Papa sandwich. It's going to make our brand more popular and capture more sales. Alejandro, we sell so many products already. Papa's burger, Papa's fries, Papa's salad, Papa's chicken, etc. Come on, young man, have you lost your mind? But that, our clients love every single product we've come, come, come with. We have always sold everything we offer. Besides, I think uh, it's about time for a product line extension and time to open a new branch. If you say so, but I don't want to hear you complain about having so much work and I'm not working over time. If you think it's going to work, you're probably right. Okay, yeah, so very good. You did it nice. So just a couple of words. It's clients. Clients. And the other ones come up with. Come up with. And then you did it nice. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. About this conversation, we have three questions. And this is on page 12 of your material. As we were practicing yesterday, you can do it from your PDF. It's easier. It's more fácil modificarlo en el PDF y lo tienen en la página 12. So you can go there and if you want to type in your answers for the three questions. Question number one, what are Alejandro and his father talking about? Number two, is Alejandro's dad enthusiastic about his son's suggestion? Number three, have they both come to an agreement about the expansion of their product line? Are the questions clear or do you have any doubt about it? What do you think? You can answer using your PDF or your notebook the way that is easier for you. And give you time for you to answer the three questions and then we share.
you finish? Okay, uh, volunteer for number one, what are Alejandro and his father talking about? A volunteer? Hi, teacher. Uh, um, number one, what are Alejandro and his father talking about? Deciding to launch the new Papa Sandwich. Okay, excellent, Francisca. Thank you so much. Yes, we are talking about launching a new sandwich. Yes, it's a new product, a new sandwich. Yes, very good, Francisca. Thank you so much for sharing. And number two, volunteer. Aymara. Is Alejandro's dad enthusiastic about his son suggestion? Not so much. Uh, because they are many products already papa's burger papa's fry papa's salad papa's chicken etc yes they have too many uh, products already so he's not really excited or enthusiastic about it <laughs> thank you so much excellent christmas i thank you number three have they both come to an agreement about the expansion of the product line Morning here. Yes, not really convinced the father. So, but yeah, they I, I think fun. they don't have a, an agree. I think that they say, okay, if you do it, do it, but don't tell me about I'm tired and work, uh, work so much, and and I don't want to work. Uh, overtime and he left the son do it whatever he want to do mm -hmm. if yes it's not like a real agreement it so yeah, you can do, it, can do but it you don't have my support <laughs> yeah, yeah don't call me if you don't what if you don't uh if you don't uh how can i say that word if you're tired of me, I don't want I don't want to work uh, overtime. Uh-huh. He's not willing to help him, right? The father is not willing to help Alejandro. No, no tiene deseo de ayudar, no, no. So he's not willing to help his son. So yeah. If, if, it's not like an agreement, so we can say that maybe they have it, but maybe they don't. So it's not really clear for us. So, but yes, you did a very good analysis of the situation. So that's good. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. And now we have here a short summary about how to use the present perfect. And by looking at the examples in the box, it is asking us to complete the exercises that we have there. And that is a short explanation about the present perfect. It says that the present perfect tense expresses actions that were started sometime in the past at not a specific moment. And the actions may or may not continue in the present. We use a helping verb, have, plus the past participle form of the verb that expresses the action. For example, we have, have you lost your mind? Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. Have they always sold everything they offer? Yes, they have. No, they haven't. Or, yes, they have sold everything they offer. Or no, they haven't told everything they offer. And then in the other side, you have for the third person, we use has. The auxiliary is has for third person. 
Alejandro, has Alejandro created a new product line? Yes, he has, or no, he hasn't. Or you can also say, yes, he has created a new product line. Or no, he hasn't created a new product line. So Mia, with this short uh, review about the present perfect, I would like to know how do you feel with this topic? Because it's grammar and I know grammar is difficult in Spanish and in English is worse. But how do you feel? ¿Qué piensan? ¿Cómo sienten esto del presente perfecto? ¿Sienten que eh, está claro aquí con este review? ¿O cómo sienten ese tema? ¿Ya lo han visto antes? ¿Les cuesta? ¿Ya sienten que está fácil dominarlo? What are your, um, me gustaría escucharlo. Any opinion? Any comments? In, in, in my in my in my personal case, this is the most difficult part of English. Uh, how I use the grammatical position, the times, the and the the different kind of of, of answers to do it. And when I have to use have, haven't, sent, etc., etc., etc. This is the most difficult part for me. Okay, so um, it's kind of difficult to know when to use have, has, and the different answers. Okay. Teacher, mm -hmm. sure. in this case, have an auxiliary. Yes, that verb is like a helping verb, an auxiliary verb. Mm -hmm. And it will uh, depend on the person. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, tell me, tell me. Yes, it will depend on the person if we use have or has. For third person singular, it's going to be has. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We will go deeper on that. So, uh, mm, let's see. In this, um, we have to complete the statements without using the words in parentheses. And this exercise is on page 13. But well, in this, we can use the 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 summary that we have there. Uh, remember that this structure uses the auxiliary have or has. Esta estructura usa el verbo auxiliar have. Para qué personas usamos have? Remember, I, I, you, I, you they, they, we, we, and they. And then has, para quien usamos has? Third person. Third person? Yes. Singular. Singular. Mm -hmm. Siempre cuando esté en singular, tercera persona, usamos has. Cuando decimos tercera persona, nos referimos a he, she, it. Entonces, y el verbo siempre va a ir en pasado participio. Eh, eso sí lo podemos completar así o aquí like, negative or we can go back later. Podemos regresar luego a este ejercicio al, al de la página 13 y como les decía eh, siempre acá vamos a hacer como un review del uso eh, del presente perfecto. So we have usage, practice and review. Present perfect tense, para qué o cuándo lo ocupamos. ¿Alguien quiere leerlo? Present perfect tense. A volunteer to read. Para que no se duerma, no, no me estén escuchando son a mí. Volunteer. So this is the usage. Esto es para qué se usa. Para finish action. Uh -huh. Result. She has lost her wallet. She can find it. Mm -hmm. Recent complete attention. I have just finished my project. Um, finish actions. Duration from past until now. I have lived in Paris for five years. Another form is life experience. Have you ever eaten sushi before? Accomplishment. Man has walked on the moon. 
changed over time. I have become more interested in medical issues. Multiple action from time. I have seen David several times. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much for helping us, David. So, much. so as you can see, hay muchas situaciones en las cuales se puede y se debe utilizar el tiempo presente perfecto. Y todos tienen un ejemplo ahí para pues estar um, para que lo podamos revisar, ¿verdad? Cuando utilizarlo y practicarlo de esa manera. Eh, lo que les aconsejo es hacer eh, ejemplos similares eh, con esta estructura para que vayan como acostumbrándose a cuándo utilizar eh, este, este tiempo en sí. Porque si se fijan, se usa para muchas cosas muy útiles en la vida. Para primer uso, finish action, past event, present result. Algo que ya terminó, pero que aún sigue teniendo efecto en el presente. Por ejemplo, she has lost her wallet, she can find it. Se ha perdido la billetera y hasta este punto no la encuentra. Entonces, pasó en el pasado, pero sigue teniendo efecto porque hasta el día de hoy no encuentra su billetera. So, she has lost her wallet. Recent completed action para acciones que recién hemos finalizado. I have just finished my project. Unfinished action también para acciones que no han terminado, algo que empezó en el pasado y que sigue en el presente. Alguna situación como, por ejemplo, I have lived in Paris for five years. Quiere decir que he vivido en París por cinco años y eso continúa. ¿verdad? La situación empezó hace cinco años y sigue así en el presente. Entonces, a eso se refiere con unfinished actions. Um, Life experiences, para experiencias que hemos tenido, como por ejemplo, decir, I had eaten sushi. He comido sushi, es una experiencia, eh, pues una experiencia del pasado y sigue con efecto, pues el, el recuerdo, lo que sea, la experiencia ahí está. Eh, accomplishments, para cosas que hemos logrado, para logros, como por ejemplo, man has walked on the moon. El hombre ha caminado en sobre la, la luna. Entonces, esos son como eh, eh, cosas que se han alcanzado. Eh, changes over the time. Eh, si haya habido algún tiempo, algún cambio sobre, por ejemplo, dice, I have become more interested in medical issues. Digamos que este es un cambio en mi persona. Tal vez no me interesaba nunca la medicina. Decía, no, que eh, no creo poder, que asco la sangre de repente. Pero con el tiempo le cambió la mente y ahora sí tiene interés en cuestiones médicas. Entonces, para eso es, eh, se utilizaría el presente perfecto. I have become more interested in medical issues. And then, multiple actions at different times. Algo que ha sucedido en repetidas ocasiones. Eh, por ejemplo, I have seen David several times. He visto a David en muchas ocasiones en diferentes tiempos. Eh, repetidas ocasiones, diferentes tiempos. No tal vez el mismo día, sino que lo ha visto, lo vio la semana pasada, antier, y lo volvió a ver hoy en la mañana. So, multiple actions at different times. También, eh, present perfect. Así que aquí la estructura de aquí está eh, para hacer oraciones afirmativas. Empezamos, eh, vamos a ir parte por parte con la estructura. Eh, a veces es muy útil tener como la, la fórmula, ¿verdad? Primero, para hacer una oración va el sujeto. Luego, el verbo auxiliar, que como ya habíamos mencionado, eh, para I, you, we, they, vamos a usar have. Si es he, she, it, has. Y luego, pues, el verbo principal en pasado participio. Y uh, luego podemos poner un complemento, como por ejemplo decir, I have lived in Lourdes for 10 years now. Okay? Por ejemplo, um, he has studied 
very hard for his final exam, for example. So you can have a complement. And you see here, auxiliary is in light blue, and then the verb must be in past participle, and it is represented in a green color. I have finished the report, for example, and we have some other sample sentences, like I have finished the report. We have opened all of the windows. She has lived in Germany for 10 years. She has called his mother twice today. I have been very busy this week. We have done our homework. She has spoken to a large audience many times. Rob Warren has taught English since 1997. Eh, como pueden ver, ahí hay diferentes eh, usos, como por ejemplo, I have finished the report. Esto sería como eh, recent completed action, la primera oración. We have opened all of the windows. Podría ser eh, finished action con aún efecto en el presente. She has lived in Germany for 10 years. ¿A dónde colocaría en esa? Sería unfinished actions, duration from past until now. She ha, oh, well, he has called his mother twice today. ¿A dónde colocaría en esa oración? He has called his mother twice today. That would be multiple actions at different times, and so on. You can practice the exercise like that. And then um, for affirmative, we can use contractions, as I was mentioning to you. And uh, so we can contract. I have. No sé hasta dónde me escucharon. Me quedé hablando sola. Buenas noches. Hello. Hi again. My screen sharing is loading. We have been having many issues with the internet because of the rain, I guess. It rained a lot here in San Francisco. Um, I have a question. Yes? I'm a... Uh, so, microphone is supposed to mute. I heard that you have a question. Yes, I'm sorry. And también en el en el manual. No. Esto es como les mencionaba, el manual, digamos que llegaba ya hasta aquí, hasta acá. O ah, ok. Ampliando, yo les pongo más cuestiones. Esto está en la presentación de PowerPoint. Ah, ok, thank you. Ah, que es lo que yo les mando, en donde incluyo un poco más de contenido, más explicación, más ejemplos para ayudarles con lo del manual. Porque a veces el manual es muy como eh, corto en ejemplos y en ejercicios, además en explicación también. Si se fijaron, va directo de un solo al grano. <risa> aquí. Eso es todo lo que tenemos. Entonces aquí yo les pongo eh, para qué sirve, cómo estructurar las oraciones, las preguntas, etcétera, y luego nos quedamos practicando ese tema. Y así vamos avanzando. Entonces, esto lo voy a encontrar en el, en el PowerPoint. Les mandé el manual y el PowerPoint. Para que tengamos no, no sé si lo encontró por ahí, Eman. ¿Sí lo encontró? Okay. Sí, ¿WhatsApp lo mandó? Sí, lo mandé en WhatsApp. Sí. Okay. Bye. 
So for the affirmative, we can use contractions. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, for the affirmative, we can use contractions. Like for example, I have finished the report. You say, I finished the report. No es como muy, ah, sí, suena, casi no se distingue muy bien. I have finished, I have finished. I've, I've finished my report or I finished the report. We have done our homework. We've done. We've we've done. We've done our homework. She has lived in Italy for six years. She's lived. She's lived. Y ahí pues ven que ese she's lived, el, el, ese apóstrofe con S no es verbo to be, es la contracción de has. She's lived in Italy for six years. Jan has been here before. Jan's been here before. So you can read them back again to continue practicing. And the, the best thing is to use contractions all the time, you know, so you can sound natural and fluent. So the recommendation is that is to practice uh, with uh, contractions. So you can practice the short form and you will sound more natural and fluent. About the negatives, it's kind of easy. Para hacer una oración negativa, solo le agregamos not después del auxiliar. So you have a subject, auxiliary plus not, and then the verb in past participle. For example, I haven't eaten dinner. I haven't eaten dinner. And then, um, if it is he, he hasn't eaten dinner. Se mantiene con lo del auxiliar dependiendo de la persona siempre. Si es I, you, we, they, have, y luego not. Que contratados haven't. Verbo en past participle. And then, he, she, it, hasn't, or has not. And the verb in past participle, and always you can have a compliment. And we have the negatives here, also uh, in full form. Tenemos la forma completa primero y luego la contestada. I have not finished the report. I haven't finished the report. I haven't cleaned the kitchen today. We haven't finished our meal yet. It hasn't rained this week. He hasn't been very fit. And now, Remember questions, and then questions cambia el orden. Se invierte. Primero va a ir al auxiliar y siempre va a depender del sujeto si vamos a usar have o has. El auxiliar va a ir primero para las yes no questions. ¿Ok? Si son una yes no questions, vamos a empezar con el auxiliar. Eh, recuerden siempre van a tener dos tipos de preguntas. Las yes no questions que son las de respuesta corta, o cómo les hicimos a las otro tipo de preguntas. Les llamamos WH or Information Questions. Que esas son las que no podemos responder con un sí o con un no y ya. Pero bueno, volviendo, vamos, yes, no questions. Have you or has uh, she or he or it. Dependerá siempre del sujeto cómo va a empezar con have or has. Luego el sujeto y siempre el verbo en past participle. After the verb, you can have a complement and at the end, the question. You see, es similar la estructura a una oración afirmativa. Eh, diríamos, they have studied for the test. Pero si es pregunta, have they, have they studied for the test? Y luego, ¿cómo respondemos? Siempre vamos a responder utilizando el mismo auxiliar, have or has. Have you done your homework? Yes, I have. O, no, I haven't. Has he told you the truth? Yes, he has. Or, no, he hasn't. 
has Mary called today? Yes, she has, or no, she hasn't. Do we have any question? ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? Ya lo vamos a practicar. Ahorita solo estamos haciendo como el, el, el review en general de toda la estructura y lo que es el, el tema. Y aquí en esta última PowerPoint eh, tienen el uh, summary de todo. Aquí ya tienen en conjunto todo. No hay ejemplos, pero aquí están solo las estructuras para affirmative, negative, and questions. Now, the next exercise. Uh, before going to this one, I'm going to check attendance for the first time tonight. Veo que faltan bastantes. Bueno, esto dos nada más. Pero vamos a hacer el check. Abigail Elizabeth Flora. Present teacher. Thank you. Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Abigail Mejía Mendoza. Carlos Alberto Castro. Present Miss. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto Estrada. Carlos Humberto, creo que dijo que iba de camino todavía. Acabo de ver un mensaje suyo. Está conectado, pero va de camino. Ok. Um, ¿Qué hacía Noemí Ramos? Cristian Noemí Ramos. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Carlos Alexis Pune. Gracias. Gracias. Aymara. Presente. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa Mengiva. Present teacher. Thank you. Yulisa Yamilet Villalta. Yulisa Yamilet Villalta. Carla Ivania Anaya. Yes. Sí. Luis Javier Castillo. Luis Javier Castillo. Matiel Saúl. Present teacher. Marilyn Alejandra. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Mario Ernesto. Present. Melanie Alejandra. Present, Miss. Samuel Antonio. Present. Santos Cristina. Present teacher. And thank you so much. And Victor. Present teacher. Thank you, Victor. Continue. I'm going to share screen to check. Remember, uh, I think this. Okay, I'm going to explain. I share this.
Thank you. Okay, I'm going to share this one. I have the PDF. Tengo el PDF. Aquí solo es para explicarles que lo incluí en el, en el PowerPoint. Pero les voy a enviar el PDF a WhatsApp para que hagan repaso de los verbos en pasado participio. Estos son los irregulares. Quiere decir que el participio de ellos pues, es bastante eh, diferente. En una ocasión, en el módulo, no sé si el pasado, I send it complete, se los mandé completa y les mandé el audio. Espero que la hayan repasado y que recuerden el past participle de los verbos que ustedes tienen ahí. So, if you have them in present, tienen que escribir acá el past participle a completar la lista y lo vamos a hacer en grupo. Solo le voy a mandar el PDF ahorita. You complete the list in group. Okay, now you have the document in your WhatsApp and you will um, complete the link in groups. Let me create a breakout room. Can you help me, please? Mm. 